you're, 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 you're listening to the podcast for all of the news, notes, and breakdowns for your Ohio State Buckeyes. This is Sons of the Shoe with Nick Wilson and Spencer German. Sons of the Shoe is back. Nick Wilson, Spencer German, and what a day it is, guys, because we're not mucking around today. Please, as always, we are a new podcast. Please make sure to follow the show wherever you get your podcasts. Apple, Spotify, uh, I don't, Stitcher doesn't exist anymore, but the free Odyssey <laughs> app. Uh, and, of course, you can follow us on uh, 92 Three Fans YouTube channel where you're probably watching this. But today, waste no further time here. The big news out of Columbus, and it has been uh, first reported that Will Howard telling Pete Thamel that he was committing to the Ohio State Buckeyes. Then the Buckeyes uh, Twitter account confirmed that as well with a big boom. So we got the news. Will Howard out of K-State is the brand new Buckeyes starting quarterback. Ari Wasserman saying he will be the starter. There's no competition. He will be the starter. And to talk about Will Howard, to give us the skinny on Will Howard, we're going to invite in here, Spencer, a man who should know him quite well. He is Matt Walters, Kansas State sideline reporter and announcer for K-State Sports Radio Network. Matt, welcome to the show, bud. Hey, gentlemen. Thanks for the invite. Well, it's great to have you. You've got such a great perspective on this. I guess we'll just start at the beginning here. What is Ohio State getting in Will Howard? Um, a, a very good player and a better kid. I, I know he's not a kid, but uh, he is a, a tremendous human being. Uh, had a huge impact uh, in Manhattan. And uh, what what's coming to Columbus is um, a, a whale of a kid. I I. You know, it's, it's interesting how all this transpired uh, now over the last month, you know, let's say five weeks, but um, you're, get, you're getting a rock star coming to Columbus. Matt, I'm curious because I think Ohio State fans, um, they're, they're doing sort of like the deep dive on, on Will Howard versus Kyle McCord and stacking the numbers up. And I think I, the one thing that obviously stands out is that he's more of a mobile quarterback than, than McCord was. But passing-wise – you got a lot of fans who are like, oh, like, is this guy really that good? Uh, he has less – his stats are worse than McCord's are. And I guess I'm just curious, like, what is your message to the fan base, to people who might be looking at the numbers and saying, like, okay, well, that tells the story of him versus the quarterback that they're sort of moving on from here? Well, as as we're getting set up, I'll tell you what, what went through my mind and, and in a very short amount of time is, you know, I got a feeling that, Buckeye Nation is looking down on this because how dare they go to someplace like Kansas State to get their starting quarterback? <laughs> yeah, probably. Um, and that's fair. Now, living here in the Midwest my whole life, I, I, I'm happy to share my thoughts on Buckeye Nation and what Ohio State football is. Um, <laughs> but be gentle. Be with, gentle. With, with that, with that being said, I mean Ohio State football. It, I mean, it is what it is. Um, there's a reason that. The Buckeyes have been so good, but what what is coming to Ryan Day's team is a gamer, a leader, a dude, a great human being. He will command the locker room. He will own the locker room. And if he got a little dinged up, um, you know, in in this last season at K State, not badly, but all things being equal. I think if he stays healthy, he is a better quarterback than Kyle McCord. Um, uh, you're you're getting a guy that can latch on to the offense right away. Um, he is he's a, he's a glue guy. Uh, I mean, I can I can keep going, but you're getting a heck of a guy. I, I'm I'm not surprised that it's happening this late because I think. Um, I think Will was still waiting to see if he was going to get invited to the Super Bowl. I personally thought he would not go anywhere else and would get into the NFL draft, but because that senior bowl invite didn't come, uh, I think this was the next best option. He talked to USC. I mean, he talked to a million people, Lane Kiffin. Uh, I don't think he would have fit in Oxford whatsoever. Mm -mm. Um, But great landing spot for him, great family. And uh, again, he's a heck of a quarterback. 
So one of the the talking points here, you mentioned the stats, you mentioned the injuries. Uh, we we kind of have been selling the mobility, and you know, I I watched a little bit of K State. You know, in, in terms of his mobility, is it functional mobility, or is this a guy you can run RPOs with? Like, yep. what level of ability can do offensively with his run game? He he can run it. Um, when when you're a quarterback at K State, uh, not a I'm not saying you guys don't know this, but again, uh, Buckeye Nation, uh, K-State football is better than you think it is. Uh, granted, it has not been the kind of program it's been for 100 years, but since Bill Snyder took over, and granted, I'm talking, let's just say the last 30 years, this has been a program that's climbed um, from being the worst in college football to um, a consistent top 20, top 25 team. When you're a quarterback at K-State, you run the football, period, end of sentence. If you can't run the football, you're not a quarterback at K-State, whether it was Bill Snyder or, or Chris Kleiman. Um, th- is he a burner? No. But look at his size. Not the easiest cat in the world to bring down. He can run the RPOs. He can zip it all over the yard. He can make almost every throw. Uh, his offensive coordinator, Colin Klein, should have won the Heisman, got robbed because of Johnny Manziel and the hype train uh, a few years ago. And he's a, he's a prototype of Colin Klein. He's a better passer than Colin Klein, better arm. Uh, he, he can do exactly what needs to be done. So I think when it comes to quarterbacks, it's always less about limitations or any stuff like it's more like what are the best situations to put them in? So kind of flip side of that, what are the situations with Will you want to kind of keep him out of to make sure you're getting the most out of him? Well, I don't think you want to run him too much for starters. You don't want him to to carry the mail, I don't know, 15 to 20 times or more than that. Um, this, that's a really good question. The situations you want to keep him out of. Um, he's, he's so sharp. Um, he can decipher defenses. You know, a, a defensive coordinator in the Big Ten or, or what have you they're going to have to throw him some different things that, that he hasn't seen. And again, what he's seen in the Big 12 of late is going to be a little different than, than what he'll see um, in, in the new Big 10. Uh, he's, he, he's going to catch on real quick. Again, he's not, he's not going to labor in terms of, of uh, a lot of defenses. Now, yeah, maybe a, a Michigan can give him some things or, um, you know, incoming Washington might give him some things that, to throw him off, but it's not going to take him long. Again, you're not you're you're not getting a recycled quarterback. Okay, you're getting a front line guy that has the. He, he, is he a prototype NFL guy? Yeah, maybe a little shy of that, but because of his size and what he can do, he's going to have a chance to play in the league. Uh, Matt, I'm not as familiar with the full personnel of of K State that was around. Will Howard, um, I you know I've, I've I've caught some of them over the years that he's been there. Like like Nick, I did watch a little bit of the Pop Tart Bowl, which we do want to get to here at the end of this conversation. I think. Don't ask me about trying it because I didn't. It was gross. I wasn't going to do it. Oh, oh, we'll man. find about twelve more convers- <laughs> questions on that one. Um, but I am curious, like, what do you think the level of just skill players that Ohio State brings to the table for him? Like, how much more do you think that can unlock in his game? given what he's coming from and to what he's joining when you have these top flight recruits like Jeremiah Smith, who's coming in this year, Carnell Tate, Emeka Ibuka, possibly Travion Henderson coming back. Just what do you think that'll do for his game? Ohio State gets more of the five stars, more of the four stars. Um, so those those type of athletes are going to make him better. He did not – no offense to what K-State had this year. K-State had a, a solid receiving court. They don't, they don't have a Marvin Harrison. I don't know really many people that that do. Um, uh, that that's going to help. Uh, he had he had a few more playmakers a year ago, and in the last couple of years than 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 this year. So I mean, okay, when you when you have a lot of the dudes that Ohio State has, that would make you a better quarterback, Spencer. So yeah, um, the yeah, I mean that that's what. I digress a bit, but when you look, when you look at recruiting, okay, yeah, Ohio State, Georgia, Texas, they get different kinds of dudes. But I will I will submit to you 
that K-State is right there when you talk about developing a guy, whatever the position is, K-State is right there. I don't know, no offense to Ryan Day and company, how much do, I mean, they develop guys, don't get me wrong, but I think you understand my point. They got guys that are real uh, unrealistic, or that's not the right word, um, unbelievably gifted that when they come to Columbus, yeah, they're going to the league. You know that already. They get a little bit better. They get a little bit bigger, stronger, faster, the whole nine yards. But I'm telling you, what Kansas State has done over the years is they're a developmental program. They don't have the NIL wherewithal that Ohio State does. They don't have a lot of the things, but they still win eight, nine, ten ball games a year. So um, Will Will Howard is advanced and he's smart. Um he, he's not the quarterback K-State has now. You know, his backup can – he was the fastest guy on the team. Mm. And Avery Johnson is going to be a dude that you guys are going to watch and maybe a first-round pick before long. But I, I am very happy for Will Howard and, um, and what he's going to bring to Buckeye Nation. Matt, I'm going to ask the dreaded two-parter, right? This is what they say in, in broadcasting <laughs> classes, don't do – um, but I'm curious. I really think you're a better broadcaster just because you are asking it. I, I, I'm snubbing <laughs> uh, in bit. I'm right in big uh, broadcasting's face with this one. Um, what was he like in big games? And I also think, you know, if Ohio State fans want to watch a, a game or two to kind of figure out and, and get a, a, a gist of who he is, what, what would good games from the last year be to watch? I would encourage you to watch the last two years. Because, again, the playmakers that K-State had in 23 were different than they had in 22. Um, again, knowing where where Buckeye Nation is in terms of how they view other college football programs, if you've never heard of a guy named Deuce Vaughn, yeah. that guy was a game changer. Uh, he was awesome. Will, will had, K-State, I will tell you, had – if not the best, and the Bowers kid from Georgia's, yeah, that guy's a dude. If Ben Sennett isn't as good as that guy, he's right behind him, and he's going to play in the league. I, I think Ben Sennett could be a, a, a Gronkowski kind of tied end at the next level. Maybe not. He's not as tall, not as fast. But go back and look at the 22 games and then in the 23 games, okay? K-State lost four games this year. Oh my God! If that happened in Columbus, oh, let's run Ryan Day out. Oh my they God! Were, they would have run. They'd run him out for less. If we're yeah, they honest. lost two games, and they want to run him out. Let's tar and feather him. Now again, it's different because not everybody was there. I get that. Kansas State lost to Missouri on a sixty-one yard field goal in Columbia. A sixty-one yard field goal. <laughs> K-State scored 30 points, if I remember right, it's 30 points in Columbia. And that was the turning point for Mizzou. I don't want to say it was a turning point for K-State, but it stung because everybody thought, or I know I thought K-State would go in there and win. K-State lost in Austin after being down 20, lost in overtime, had a first and goal at the four and couldn't get it punched in. Missed a PAT, had a botched PAT and missed a field goal. I think Texas was in the CFP playoff. Mm -hmm. Very white collar football team. I could get off on another tangent about the ridiculous play calls <laughs> in that one in the last two minutes when Texas had a gift and was inside the 20. Awful play calling. But in case now, K State lost in a snow game to Iowa State. Oh my God, terrible loss. Four inches of snow on the field. K State's defense played the worst I've seen it in play in maybe 10 years that night. Um, but again, four losses all by eight points or less and to legit teams. Um, so offensively, don't just look at a one-year snapshot, look at two, because what Will Howard was when he stepped on campus in Manhattan to when he walked off the field that, that snowy night after losing to Iowa state, um, light years ahead everybody knew he would be a player but he wound up being much better than i thought he was going to be all right well i want to get you out of here with the dreaded the dreaded question that you didn't want to talk about i, I know you didn't no. you, said, you said you didn't no. try the pop tart no Got to. 
what did the team what did the team say about the pop tart and what did you think of the whole gimmick in in of itself <laughs> if i remember right it was strawberry and the guys most Solid of the guys flavor. said it tasted okay um <laughs> I like food, but I don't want 1,212 <laughs> hands in my food. That's fair. Um, the little, the guy, that, I assume it was a guy, but the guy that played the pop tart was pretty funny. Um, was he, was he like talking or was he just being funny? Like with what he was doing? No, I think he was talking too. He had the, oh, he had good. the white hat busted up a couple of times and Larry Smith's a big 10 ref. Um, that was a big 10 crew that we had in that ball game. And I think he did a couple of things that, maybe he shouldn't have done pertaining to the coaches and maybe some things that he said, supposedly <laughs> I stayed, I stayed away from the dude. Uh, those things kind of creep me out sometimes. Sure. Um, it, it is what it is. I mean that I want to know how much that guy got paid to stand on top of the toaster <laughs> and drop down in and, and so forth and so on. But it was I a hoot. paid to turn. do it. My, yeah. I, well, I was going to say, my my take on the whole thing was like nobody had a better bowl season than Pop-Tarts because they announced that mascot like months ago and people were talking about it. They're like, oh, what's this going to be? And then people were waiting for the video yep. that went viral of the of him jumping in and the Pop-Tart coming out. They were waiting desperately for that. I, I literally went to the gas station the other day and I was like, you know what? I'm craving Pop-Tarts because I've been talking about this, this damn Pop-Tart bowl for a couple of months. So, I'll tell um, you, the, the, I give them all sorts of credit for creative. Yeah. And when I think about the, the time I've spent with you two, Spencer and Nick, my guess is of the two of you, Nick would play the Pop-Tart dude and Spencer, you would not. Yeah, I would. I'd be the fattest Pop-Tart you ever saw, but <laughs> damn it, I'd pull it off. I'd be the one who wanted to eat the Pop-Tart at the end. Yeah. I would definitely try it. That'd be me. All right. That's a little incestuous for a podcast there, Spencer. Maybe talk to your therapist about that. Um, Matt, really great stuff, man. Appreciate your time. You did this on short notice today. We appreciate that, man. And uh, listen, that is a hell of a program. The uh, coach is a hell of a coach, and we're excited to see what K-State does in the future. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you, um, guys, I appreciate the invite. Uh, no problem on short notice. You know, K-State and Iowa State played in a bowl game not too terrible long ago uh, out in Arizona. And being living in Kansas my whole life and being a K-State guy, um, the 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 journey for Kansas State to get to play a team like Ohio State and some of the others it was awesome to play NC State last last week but um, why don't you you guys I think carry a little bit of weight and and have some moxie let's do a home and home okay I, I'll set a home up. and home lined up I love it because and here's why I say it and I'm being selfish because the one time that I was in Columbus Ohio was a, in the summer, and there was little kids' football stuff going on at the shoe. And the people I were with, um, a couple of baseball friends, we wanted to get a tour of the shoe. We just wanted to step inside, step on the turf. I'm not going to begin to tell you how we got treated. Hmm. Do we have to talk to people? Yes. <laughs> All right. So let's get a home and home done. I want I like you guys it. to come see what it's like here in Manhattan and the Little Apple. Because we do it right. We tailgate as good, if not better, than anybody in America. So, uh, And I'll tell you what. I will I will take care of the two of you if that happens. Now, you won't have to pay hotel. You can stay at what I call I Poverty Bottoms if you come to Manhattan. All right. I do, I, so here's the thing. You're making a fat man uh, drool over here. I got to know, what's the tour de force? When I go to, when I go to um, Manhappiness, as you called it, I got to ask, what's at the, the the tailgate there? What am I noshing on? Anything from um, the right answer. cheeseburgers to, it depends, breakfast, but also some some damn good barbecue. That's what I was, I was I, waiting for the barbecue. That's what I was waiting for. I love the sound of that. Hey, Nick, I want to tell you something. My, my wife and I, we have the greatest dog on the planet. He is an old English bulldog. And you drool worse than he does. Uh, I'm telling you, man. <laughs> I haven't had an I haven't had an ounce of sugar since Sunday. So right, if if that pop tart was walking through my <laughs> living room right now, I'd go carnivore on his ass. He would not stand a chance. I I just wanted to say, Matt. I I don't know your dog yet, but he sound, he already sounds. I would take him over Kirk's dog. I think. 
Oh, he's an old English bulldog, <laughs> seventy-one pounds, and he would he would take out Herb Street's dog any day of the week. I love it. For a I second, I it. thought Spencer was saying he would take the bulldog over me, and I was about to get oh, pretty pissed no. off here. I don't know if I can he do did, a good podcast with a dog, but it goes without saying he did say that. Yeah, dogs are better than me. I've always said that. Matt, great stuff, buddy. Appreciate you. Appreciate you, man. Boys, boys take care. Yeah, we'll Thanks take you much. up on that offer. If it happens, we'll we'll be Soon. there. Sure. Yeah, let's hope. Appreciate Good you, man. my man. Spencer, I got to be honest with you. With this Will Howard news, you know, after we talked about him on the previous episode, Sons of the Shoe, you can get it everywhere, you get your podcast. Um, I was already starting to get hyped because I was doing the thing you shouldn't do. I was watching highlight videos. I was reading <laughs> like scouting reports on him. I was talking to friends who had watched him kind of up close. So I was already building an excitement about this. And we'll get into like some of the logistical reasons why. And then we talked to Matt and it's like, okay, now I'm sold. Now, like, yeah. I, do I have to get do I have to get a Will Howard jersey? Is that where we're going here? Because that was awesome, man. <laughs> no, he first of all, he was great. Um, just from a personality standpoint, like, really brought the energy. Had a lot of good things to say. Um, you know, I like that he he took a couple jabs at, at Ohio State fans and overreacting to certain things when it comes to Ryan Day. Um, but that he also recognizes how how astute of a program that is, and um, there's there's certainly a respect there. Um, but yeah, I mean, how can you not listen to that? How can you not see just some of the, the reports that are out there about the, the type of player and person that he is and not be at least somewhat excited about the player that you're getting? And, and, I, and I understand. I, I do think, by the way, Matt's right. Like, I think on some level, Ohio State fans, um, it's the stats is part of it because we've talked, I mean, we've talked about the stats before, the, the, the rushing part of it is what it is. We know he's a better runner than Cobb McCore was, but for him to have essentially 500 less passing yards than, than Cobb McCore did. And for him to have the same amount of touchdowns, but more interceptions than Cobb McCore did. I think people are looking at that and they're like, Oh, well, are we really getting an upgrade here? Um, but I do think part of the conversation beyond the stats is that people really do look they they look down at K State. I think that's that has to be part of it. They're like, why are we getting this quarterback from K State? Like it's it's almost if you're not a quarterback from fill in the blank program that you put at the same level as Ohio State, like USC or Georgia or Alabama, then you just assume that the guy must suck. And that's where you got to dig deeper and understand the type of player he is. I think it was great you asked the question about where should fans go back and watch because it sounds like those are moments the last two seasons that you'll be able to go back and find a guy and, and really see what you're getting in a quarterback. Well, and what kills me is the kid is 19 and eight the last two years at K-State. Huh? So it's not as if this is, you know, I'm trying to, what was the, who's the quarterback in between Bill's, uh, the, sorry, the, the head coach in between well, Ron Prince. It's not the Ron Prince era, all due respect. Chris Kleiman is a hell of a football yeah. coach. And they've been, I mean, and here's the thing. They won 10, uh, I, think, I think, no, I think it was nine games this year in a loaded Big 12. And to me, like, let's just be honest. You can't run down Kyle McCord and say that he's not really a top 10 quarterback, even though the stats say it. And by the way, he's not really a top 10 quarterback. He is a very raw passer. He can't move. He struggles to make plays. He sticks on guys. He doesn't read the whole field. Like, he, a lot of his production is because he had Marvin Harrison and Travion Henderson and Emeka Abuka when Emeka was healthy. And it's like, and, and Cade Stover. Like, and, and by the way, I know we're in, let's bleep all over Ryan Day. We also had Ryan Day, who's, who's put dudes, consistent dudes, last three quarterbacks before Kyle McCord into the NFL. So I think, you know, it's funny. I initially had the same reaction when I'm talking about like the first time it was really floated over the weekend about Will Howard. And I was like, well, but he is he, he's the inverse of, of Kyle McCord. Kyle McCord's a guy whose stats look great, but when you watch the tape, it's puzzling. It's a little bit agitating. And honestly, and I'm not trying to put it all on the kid because they lost the game, but quarterback play is one of the central reasons why you lost the biggest game of the season this year because of the two interceptions. And Will Howard's the opposite of that. 
Will Howard, as you heard with Matt, kind of overcame a defense that wasn't consistent or wasn't great this year. He was a guy whose stats, his his ability to make plays is bigger than what maybe the stats tell you with good talent around him, but not Ohio State talent around him. Yeah, I, I don't think enough can be understated about the the amount of talent he's stepping into and, and how different that will be. Um, I, again, may, I don't know. Maybe maybe he doesn't put up the numbers. He also, I mean, I mean, Matt mentioned it. Like he also got hurt this year. That that that's part of the conversation as well, where he he's kind of battling injuries and in and out of the lineup and different stuff like that. So he didn't have a chance to put up maybe more numbers than what people wanted to see. Um, I I just I I can't get trapped in that in that bubble. And and I I also think too, Nick. Part of the or I guess not. It's not really a bubble, but it's like a, a whirlpool of people who are just like like thinking of, oh, this guy can't be any good. He was, he didn't have better numbers than Kyle McCord when really you got to use the context of like the situation and study actually what he did and go back, like you mentioned, and watch the tape. Um, but I also think too, part of this is that people just are looking for any reason not to trust Ryan Day at this point. Yeah. And so like, unless it was going to be, they went out and they got, like maybe if Cam Ward had come, people would have liked that more. Or maybe if some other top, you know, quarterback in the country that entered the portal. I don't know. Maybe if um, Dante Moore had come and it was like, oh, they got this five star from a couple years ago and now he's come. Like, I don't know. Maybe there's a couple guys that people would have given him credit for, but I do think part of it is with everything that's transpired the loss to Michigan again, questions about his future, not, you know, not having the, 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 the gusto to actually go for it on in certain situations. I mean, I made a joke the other night at his expense watching the Michigan game about how Harbaugh went for it on fourth and two and Ryan Day wouldn't have gone for it on fourth and two. Um, mm-hmm. So like, I, I think that's all just part of the storyline here too. And so they see a, the stats, they see a Kansas, the B Kansas state, and they see, C. well, if Ryan Day's making this decision, then how can it be really that good? And I just want to remind you that Ryan Day was also responsible for bringing somebody named Justin Fields to Ohio state through the transfer portal. So we know this can work. We know that it can work bringing a quarterback in the portal here. And I think if you if you actually sit back and you let your emotions, which I have them too. I, I was riled up after the Peach Bowl, after the, uh, not the Peach Bowl, the Cotton Bowl. Um, like, I, I get it. But if you can take a step back and just recognize, like, he's trying to do this thing right. We're going to talk, I'm sure, about there's a couple offensive linemen who are coming to visit Ohio State now as well. And so they're clearly trying to address the two biggest needs that they have which are offensive line and the quarterback position, at some point you're going to have to give the guy credit if this works out. So, you know, the question really is, is uh, Will Howard an upgrade over Kyle McCord? And so let's put those stats over where they belong, which are in the trash. Um, I think (laughs) almost any quarterback that started, uh, that's that's a little heavy-handed. I think almost any quarterback with top 25 stats would have had better stats in Columbus than where they played this year. Like the, the, the anomalies would be like Carson Beck in Atlanta who had Brock Bowers amongst other people in a great offensive line. The anomalies are Caleb. Well, maybe Caleb Williams would have actually won games this year if he had played in Columbus, but I'm going to, there are two reasons why definitively I think Will Howard will be better next year for Ohio state than Kyle McCord was this last year. And I'm talking about statistically better. I'm talking about, I think you're going to be, this is a quarterback I think you can run the table with. And I think it all starts with fit. And he can do two things that Kyle can't do. Number one, his ability as a runner. And a lot of what I saw was uh, using RPOs. And all of a sudden you're using, whether it's Travion Henderson, the kid out of Ole Miss who might be transferring here. Um, The RPOs, if you had been able to run RPOs this year, your offense would have been even more explosive yeah. and you just couldn't do it because of Kyle, Kyle style. This is something they focused on a lot at K state. You don't have to. And here's the thing. You don't have to run RPOs 15 times a game to get the threat of the RPO. He's also good on the move, meaning he can make plays on the move with his legs and, and he might not beat every guy off the edge, but he can get those, you know, big plays on the outside and, and pick up that first down from here and there. The second thing is he is a polished passer. And I, you know, just even just watch the highlights. Yeah. He's making throws across the middle of the field. He's making throws in tight windows. And Kyle did that sporadically. 
right? Uh, I, I think it was the Carnell Tate thing where he threw it between the hands of the defender. But those throws were fewer and far between. And Will is just a much more polished passer. And Agreed. so I think as you get into this offense, I think he's going to be able to make consistent throws, big and small. And I, I don't think you can underestimate the power of this kid being a big I wouldn't I wouldn't say fast, but he's fast enough to be a run, you know, to, to make it work, but being able to be big and athletic enough to run the RPO game that I think all of a sudden now you give Ryan Day on top of all these tools, I think it de-emphasizes the just completely bougie ass offensive line play you saw for most of this year. Yeah. So and but bougie's not the right word. Bad or yeah, average yeah. offensive line play. So not only does it give Ryan Day more to work with, which I think is the most important thing, it also protects you in case you're still bringing back an average or slightly above average offensive line next year when we're used to a great offensive line. I think one of the biggest things I'm going to go back and watch for sure, because you're because you're right, Like you, you, one of the things that stands out on the tape is definitely – that he's a more polished passer. He can make a lot of the throws in, in, in tight windows, and you only saw that in bits and pieces from, from McCord. Um, but I want to go back and watch like his processing because one of the biggest complaints with mm -hmm. McCord, of course, was and, – and this was something that was brought up multiple times on the broadcast. Um, you know, Joel Klatt was bringing it up all game long against Michigan that he's basically a one-read guy. He, he, he'd zone in on his guy, and that's where he was going with the ball. And, he wouldn't and the guy was Marvin it. Harrison Jr. Yeah, it was – generally it was Marvin Harrison Jr. Maybe like 10% of the time it wasn't. Um, but, yeah, like I, I think that's something I want to see from Will Howard. I haven't watched like enough of his game tape or enough of his games to really know if he's, you know, moving the safety with his eyes and then throwing it the other way. So I'll go back and look for that. Um, but I think you're right about the other things you said. And I also think, too, like you're spot on with uh, the, the RPO game and his ability to run. I would love to pick Ryan Day's brain, like be a fly in the wall as to why they didn't do that more with C.J. Stroud. Because the people who want to sit here and claim like, well, does he really want a, a running quarterback? Guys, again, I remind you, Justin Fields. And I understand like Dwayne Haskins, he didn't do it with. But Dwayne Haskins wasn't anywhere near the running quarterback that uh that Justin Fields was or that I guess CJ Stroud could have been and we've seen some of that in the NFL from him too I don't know why he didn't want to run it more CJ Stroud I don't know if he was trying to prove to himself like I can build your prototypical typical pocket passer here at Ohio State I have no idea but I, I think that is part of the game that he wants uh I think he he did that for several years with Justin Fields I also think too you bring up that he's not like the fastest guy and Justin Fields is clearly a mix of like speed and strength uh, you know, we're seeing him do that at the NFL level and just like leave dudes in the dust while also running them over. But you talk about Ohio State being almost not not almost being soft in recent years. Mm -hmm. I think a quarterback that's built like Will Howard, who's more of, yeah, I'm not going to run. I'm not going to beat you to the end zone every play, but I'm going to try my damnedest to stiff arm you to the ground on the way, run your ass over on the way. I think that could work wonders for a team that's trying to send a message about just toughness and beat Michigan finally, a team that's been tougher than you the last three years. So I, it, it honestly does feel like this might be the right quarterback for this team right now to kind of get things back on track. Uh, we haven't even talked about the fact that, like, Tyleek Williams put out a message that he's coming back. So you know him. Jack Sawyer made it sound like he's probably – so you're starting to see the, the inner workings of this defense could come back and be really, really good, really, really physical, really, really senior-laden – or not even senior-laden, but just experienced – and on top of that, you're going to get a quarterback like this who can be physical, who can be a running quarterback and bring that physicality to the game, but also make all the throws with the talent he has around him, bolstering the offensive line, which it sounds like is in the works. Like this is starting to be what you what, what Buckeyes fans should be should be hoping for. And and I hope that then on some level they can look past the criticisms of Ryan Day and the comparisons to to Cooper and all this different stuff and, and understand like he's clearly trying. OK, he's trying to level with us as fans here, and I can at least give him some respect on that, uh, on that, that he's trying to build this thing and move it in the right direction. Yeah. And I think we get into this game about the name game in the portal. And I get it. We did yeah. it, too. And I would have loved Cam Ward, who's since gone to the NFL. Yeah. I, I would have loved Darius. He's probably Moore. my top choice, if I'm being honest. Like, I really, I, really I, wanted him. 
I really love Darius Moore, who I think was the Dante, least you mean Dante, Dante, Dante Moore. Dante Moore, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's how much I loved him, as I effed <laughs> up his name there. But yeah. I really, I really I love Dante you. Moore, even though I forget might be your the, name tomorrow. So it's the fun. least yeah. polish. But like, I think fit matters when you go to yeah. the portal. A lot of guys get horny for names and and don't necessarily focus on fit or health or all these other things. And you know, you mentioned the C.J. Stroud thing, who's been the anomaly. I mean, McCord didn't run, but that's because he could barely move compared to all the other quarterbacks. I, I had two working theories on why he didn't rush um, or didn't use C.J. Stroud more, whether it's RPOs or just on the move. My first one is he just didn't think he had to because of all the talent around him. Maybe. So that yeah. kind of bolsters your theory of, well, he wanted to prove he can you know, build a pocket passer. The second thing is C.J. doesn't have the build of will. You know, mm-hmm. CJ is a little bit more undersized quarterback. And when I say undersized, he's not six foot five, 235, 40 pounds, which is what Will Howard is. So I think I think that size thing's another big thing here where this is a kid who, you know, I, and I know he got dinged up last year, but you're not gonna have to worry about those sames, you know, getting dinged up too much because he is just a mule of a human being. Yeah. I also think you mentioned fit. I want to go back to that for a second because we've talked a lot about finding the right quarterback for next year, potentially in the portal, while also thinking ahead about what's to come. And we know Aaron Nolan is enrolling early. He should be there in the spring. We know that the idea is he at some he he's supposed to be that next man in line, the successor, the 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 guy who becomes that next big star quarterback that Ryan Day's putting in the NFL as a top pick, right? So to bridge the gap to him, this was what you were looking for. You were looking for a guy who can give you a year, and then he's able to go to the NFL, which it sounds like is what he was trying to maybe do this year and get an invite to the senior bowl, which didn't happen. And then from there, you can then make your transition like you want probably to Air Nolan in 2025. So this, yeah, it, this is, and, and it's a from, fit from that standpoint too, is what I'm trying to say. And from what it sounds like in the Thamel piece, it does sound like Ryan day's ability to launch quarterbacks in the NFL was a huge yeah. part of this. And so I, again, that's where like, like it or yeah. not. And, and I understand, listen, it's okay to have criticisms of Ryan day, okay, yeah. but you know, for all those people that wanted this dude murked, um, yeah, you know, five hours ago, and maybe Will Howard's not going to do it for you. But this fall, I would imagine you're going to see Will Howard, and you're going to change your mind. You don't get him without Ryan Day. And I here's can I share one more thing that I thought was really fascinating about uh, Will Howard and him him coming to Ohio State. The fact that he, you know, he's leaving Kansas State, a place that developed him, a place that, you know, you could you could see a school maybe becoming more possessive of a guy like that, not being happy. He left on good terms, such good terms, in fact, that Chris Kleiman, the head coach, consulted him the entire time throughout the entire process. Yeah, that's something. That's that something. speaks volumes about the kid and the program. And I just think, like, I'll be honest, man, when I've left jobs – to go to another job, As I you, well. you kind of always keep the old job in in the past, or not in the past, but in the dark because you you know you don't you kind of don't want to muck things up, and you kind of want to that make that it makes that relationship weird. So I think that tells you of a kid that's secure and a kid that knows who he is and a kid that trusted his coach. I think that's huge, man. I think that's gigantic. I think that is – I just want to say really quickly because I've I've had people on social media and maybe in the comments on the YouTube channel, I don't know. People have thrown out this idea that, like, what has Ryan Day actually done in developing players or quarterbacks or whatever? And I think it's very prisoner of the moment to feel that way. Like, of the guys he's worked with, Justin Fields, C.J. Stroud, Dwayne Haskins, and now – I did it out of order, obviously, but now Kyle McCord. Only one of them, he's 20, 75% of the time, he has made, he has basically created a first round draft pick quarterback. And yeah, I but other than that, I, but <laughs> other than the three quarterbacks he's put in the first round, who was who he really put in the and, first and round? I, as and a quarterback? I understand, like, that's the one we have most recently, tangibly in front of us. So it's, it's going to hold a little bit more weight right now. I also understand Dwayne Haskins was a first round pick, didn't necessarily pan out as a first round pick in the NFL. But the, the, to your point, if there's quarterbacks in the portal 
in recruiting who are looking to go to a school that's going to develop them into that guy who's going to be first round pick quality. Ryan day has the resume that shows he's done that to this point. So I think you're right. It's, it speaks a lot about will that he left on good terms. It seems like he really vetted this process. seems like Ohio state really vetted this process. They didn't just jump. Like you talked about in an earlier episode, um, they didn't just jump and go get the, the hot name out there as soon as the portal op- as soon as the portal opened up in December. They waited. They went through the Cotton Bowl to see if they could see maybe what Devin Brown was going to bring to the table. They've clearly reassessed some things, and Will Howard's their guy. And it sounds like from all the reporting as well that they always had their eye on him as the potential starter next year. So I think you're right. Fit matters, and it seems like this is the this is the fit that they wanted, and it seems like it could be a good fit for them. Well, and if you're going to pay attention to the warning signs of which, like the Connor, uh, the the Hinsman thing, the podcast, that, that like take that, like yeah. pay attention to that because that could be something that we we look back on and say there were warning signs. So pay attention to that, but also understand Ryan Day could have jettisoned uh, key members of his staff in November to to satiate the bloodlust in Columbus after losing to Michigan. And that could have effed up the the high school recruiting class, right? Um, He could have overreacted after losing to the Cotton Bowl, right? He could have, like, at any point here, he could have overreacted. And the thing that people hate about Ryan Day is the thing that I think has made this work out, that helped you maintain the number two class in the country, despite all the uh, all the noise and all the, the concerns about it, that helped you stave off. I mean, they've had, what, 16 guys in the portal now? And yet, you just got one of the top uh, portal quarterbacks there, and yet you're being linked to a lot of interesting prospects with experience who can step right in and make an impact on the offensive line on other parts of this team, like, yes, there are reasons to be concerned. And yes, I am still expecting that there might be a staff change, two change, maybe three change. We'll see. But like overall, you have to look at the big picture and go, if if a different coach, if a more prone to immediate reaction coach had been there, yeah, you might have gotten that bloodlust. You might have gotten more of what you wanted, but it also might have slipped the program more into a gray zone where even more guys left, where it's even a bigger mass exodus, or where maybe guys like Tyler Williams don't come back or Sawyer doesn't come back. Hell, there's thought Travion could come back next year. That I don't think that happens if a different coach is running the show. So if we're going to bash the crap out of the guy, and rightfully so when he loses to Michigan, you're going to bash the crap out of him for a 14-3 to loss in a Cotton Bowl that nobody cared about. And, you know, if he had win, you're sure as hell not giving him credit for. Let's also remember, number two recruiting class, he just got a very important piece, and it looks like he's starting to, to give us the pieces of what the 2024 Buckeyes are looking like. And other coaches might have overreacted quicker. That's not always the best thing. So kudos to Ryan Day for taking it on his own time and taking care of things one at a time here. Yeah, I, I think that's 100% well said. Um, and, I mean, let's face it. If a move like Will Howard, if some of these other moves that could be coming turn into beating Michigan and a, a playoff run next year, we'll be having probably a very different story about, about Ryan day. And uh, I think it'll be for some people, it will be, they will be having to give him some more flowers. And I think they obviously have at least this year. Um, I think there's maybe some of that last year after the Georgia game where they put up a good fight and nearly knocked him off. But, but uh, there's going to be a lot of looking back, I think on 2023 laughing a little bit at, at some of the the thoughts and feelings people had about Ryan day. If he really turns this thing into a, another championship contender with the way he's, he's, he's operating. I think, not panicking says a lot. Um, we'll see if there are any staff changes coming. But for now, um, it seems like all the things that the fan base has wanted, he is going out and making a point to make sure those things happen because he understands what's at stake too. All right, guys. We do have one more segment to come. We've got the Michigan panic meter. We have, uh, we, we're, of course, going to look at the other kind of portal news here. But you guys can get at us. Nick At Nick Wilson says, at Spencito underscore, do you guys feel like the Buckeyes – landed an upgrade over Kyle McCord in landing uh, Will Howard, formerly of Kansas State. You guys can also leave comments on the 92 Through the Fan YouTube channel, uh, but we'll be back right after a quick message from our sponsors.
All right, guys, final segment of today's show as we continue to put a pin, put a bow on, I don't know, on Will Howard being the new Ohio State quarterback. And it's funny, like, I've already seen Lima bleeping all over it. Uh, Anthony Lima <laughs> from who is the who What did Dustin chief? say? What's his thoughts? Uh, D- Dustin gave me an LFG on air. And I thought he was going to give me the real thing. He got, he went, he's so funny, dude. Yesterday we talked about Will Howard. Eh, let's say he wasn't there. Today, it comes down on air, and you would have thought they won the national championship. So, um, no, I got to tell you, man, like, it pumped me up. And a lot of it is, like, even if he's just – even if he gives you the same performance of Kyle McCord, guys, it's going to look different because the fit is different. If he uh, put up the exact same stats of – of Kyle McCord and it's going to feel completely different because of the things you're able to do. And it wouldn't surprise me if you're able to score more points, more freely with Will Howard as a quarterback, even if his stats look identical to uh, Kyle McCord's and I'm just blacking out now, you know what? I'm going to do the Homer thing. And I, you, I always bust you for being a Homer, but (laughs) but the more, the more I've watched, I got to stop watching highlight reels. The more I watch Will Howard, it's time for the Michigan panic meter. And I'm here to say, My slate is clean. Uh, There is no more panic here. I asked for a starting quarterback in the portal. Are we doing a first ever here? You're doing a first ever. I am full gray. Not only is my beard partially gray, I am full gray. There is no panic in my heart. (laughs) Michigan, you got to win. You you might win the national title. I'm not assuming it, but next year, Will Howard is going to break a foot off up in your ass. Enjoy it while you can. Because Will Howard is here to be your daddy. Bam. All gray. What you say? Uh, I'm not going to quite go all gray. I'm going to shift from white to light gray. Because mm-hmm. the Will Howard news has me excited as well. So I'm, I'm joining you in the gray, just not full gray. Um, and what I'll say is, if Michael Penix Jr. takes care of business on Monday, again, I, lo- I love – the color purple. It happens to be my favorite color um, for a number of different reasons. My niece loves the color purple. I'm going to join her. Purple has always been my favorite color as of two days ago. Um, but if he takes care of business, I will be joining you in the the full-on dark gray of the Michigan Panic Meter next week. So there you go. I think I've just proven myself to be the bigger Ohio State fan. You're, no. you're 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 Charlie Panic over here when it comes to losing the effing Cotton Bowl, but we get Will Howard, Will the Thrill, Will the Kid, Billy the Kid. I don't know; these are bad nicknames. I'm just telling you, I'm going there. I am downtown Pound Town when it comes for hype. And you're like, mm, we'll see about the national. No, title I, game. listen. I'm not trying to temper my. Listen, I'm I'm very very excited. It's not that I'm trying to temper the fact that they got a quarterback. I, I've had a smile on my face this entire episode for our video audience. Um, I, I, I'm thrilled. I love it. I, 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 it's the reason why as soon as Pete Thamel dropped the nugget that he was coming to a Columbus, the first thing I did was text you and say, they got Will Howard because I'm very, very excited. I just I, – I, I was excited enough to move it to the gray. There's still the backdrop of Michigan – is about to play for a national championship on Monday. If that wasn't the case, I would be in the gray. I'd be full on gray, but I, I can't do it yet. I'm sorry. I, it's, it's not that you're not an Ohio State fan. It just means more to me, and that's apparent. Now, um, <laughs> I, we do have a couple bits of transfer news to go. Uh, Jair Brown transferred to LSU, the cornerback. Uh, Noah Rogers, uh, the wide receiver, went to NC State. And it's funny because, you know, he uh, Rogers was one of the big recruits last year. Yeah. And so everybody kind of uh, panicked about it. And it's like, well, Jeremiah Smith and Brandon Innes have kind of surpassed him. Plus, you've got Carnell Tate back. And there could still be different moves you could make. So I thought this was a numbers move. I, yeah. It's not that Noah is not going to be a nice player. It's just I think he read the tea leaves. So For to sure. me, this week is more about the guys they're bringing in on visits. Previously, I, you had mentioned the offensive lineman. Yeah. Can I say real quick, too, because you mentioned you Brandon Innes' name. I – for some reason, he's always the one I forget. I don't know why. Like, when you start rattling off these names, you're like, oh, Emeka Buka might come back. Uh, you got Carnell Tate. You got Jeremiah Smith. And I just completely blow past. No, I don't mean to disrespect Brandon Innes that way. I know he's a damn good player coming out of high school. One of the top recruits in the class last year. And I think he's going to see a lot of playing time next year. 
and he's going to be a star on this team. I, just, I For some reason, I always forget his name, but he's the one who also likes to stir the pot the most on social media when it comes to guys who enter the transfer portal and trying to almost lure them to Ohio State. He did it with Dante Moore, I believe it was, um, and now he's got some some other people he's doing, doing it with well. So well, I appreciate let, the fact that he's trying to help bolster the team. Let's say that name real quick because uh, when Quinshawn Junkins, uh, Junk, Judkins, yes. who is a, a soon-to-be junior uh, for Ole Miss running back, entered the portal, Brandon Innes quote tweeted with the eyes. And we know what that you know means. what the eyes means. The eyes emoji mean if you're looking at him, maybe there's a tease <laughs> there. Uh, Will Howard? I Follow see the man on IG. Yeah. Uh, so real quick, just a little information there. Uh, 2,700 res- uh, rushing yards the last two years. 31 touchdowns at Ole Incredible. Miss. A total of 3,000 yards from scrimmage and 34 touchdowns. So I, now that would, if he comes here, I'm assuming that means Travion Henderson that was, is off yeah. to the NFL. That was going to be my question was more so just like not uh, not that you knew the answers f- out, f- outright, but just kind of for the discussion of the show. Um, I'm assuming if they were to get him, it would probably mean that Travion Henderson saying, I'm going pro. Um, yeah. that, that would be my guess. Um, but I, I love the idea of Brendan is at least dreaming up that he would also come here. So that that's awesome. So the other two quick things, um, they have already hosted Derek Graham, who's a tackle out of Troy, and he has most recently Bring known... Bring me all the tackles. We, they need tackles, man. Come on. So, so Get these interior offensive line. I want tackles. All the tackles that are available. So there are some interesting stats on him, but he is most recently known as the only guy to score a touchdown for Troy in the Birmingham Bowl in their loss to Duke. So we got a fat guy touchdown already. He's 6'4", 315. Um, his uh, PFF numbers this year, three sacks, 13 hurries on 523 pass-blocking snaps. His uh, pass-blocking stats are better overall. His grades on PFF are better than his run-blocking grades, which are interesting because the, the Buckeyes were probably best on the, the ground this year, and that's where they really showed some um, some kind of uh, upside this year. But he's got two years remaining of eligibility. He would be a grad transfer. He can play immediately. He visited um, Wednesday. It's a weird week. I don't know what today is. I think it's Thursday. Could be Friday. Could be Tuesday. I it don't know. Thir- well, as recording, this is Thursday. Yes. Yeah, but – the other guy who is uh, – and, and he's got, I think, by the way, Derek Graham has, I think, one or two more visits to do before he makes his decision. But the other guy that uh, that is visiting Columbus this week is Seth McLaughlin, the center from Alabama, who really took a lot of flack on social media for the snapping issues during the Alabama-Michigan game. He does have 36 career starts, which is a huge amount of numbers, a huge huge number for starts to get here. Um even and and people pointed this out. Even if you're not confident he can play center, he does have experience at guard. But that's another mammoth guy. And I would l- listen. I think the snap things are interesting. I would also say, like, you, I, you just never know. Like, I, honestly, I, it could be the yips, could be nothing. But I think these are two guys that be. These are nice if you can get these guys. Listen more bodies in that room, more competition, and let the best man win. Yeah, no, I, I, uh, I've I, been saying all show that the, the two biggest areas of concern were quarterback and uh, offensive line, and the two obviously are very dependent on each other. So I'm all in on any of the guys they're hosting along the offensive line. Uh, I think McLaughlin is a, is a good player. Yes, we just watched him the other night. I understand people were looking at the, the Alabama offensive line and the Alabama offense in general kind of suspect – but um, I don't think that he's necessarily the main problem there. And I, I think anything Ohio State can do to try to bring in talent that can help that group is uh, the more the merrier. I, I see no problem with it whatsoever. And especially now that you do know you have a quarterback that you want to use both in the run game and the pass game, um, I think it's beneficial to just, you know, to weigh the options that are out there and, and start bringing some of these guys in. There's, I mean, there's a couple of guys I know – that they didn't really pursue earlier on in the transfer portal period. So now that they're kind of in the mix for these guys, it has me even more excited about the prospect of, of Will Howard coming here, and hopefully they continue to just make the team better. Well, and another interesting name, and I, I listen, I don't know that we're going to know um, 
it, whether Ohio State is going to uh, pursue them or not. But Nolan Rucci, uh, Todd Rucci's son, longtime Patriot, he did en- – uh, former Wisconsin offensive lineman, he did enter yeah. the transfer portal. There was a cool moment where he and his brother were on the field for Wisconsin this year. He was the seventh offensive tackle and number 36 recruit in the 2021 class. So if you're looking for more of a big tackle, you know, like Derek Graham's about – Six four three fifteen. I I think Nolan Rucci is a giant of a kid. I, I I if I'm remembering the right brother here, he was like six seven six eight something like that. More of a left tackle. So uh, that is a name to watch as well. Here is there anything I'm missing on today's episode before we get going? I don't think so. I think we covered it all. Um, and to I, you bring up Rucci by the way. I I think he's like. Give, give, bring him, bring him here. And you're right, six eight two ninety five is what his his uh, build was. I was trying to look that up while you were talking, but um, same, yeah. Watching some of the Wisconsin games, um, he he's a he's a he's a monster. So like that's the type of guy I think you're looking for, especially to go back to what we talked about with with Will Howard. If you're trying to become a more physical team, uh, a tougher team, he brings that mentality and he kind of fits the billing of what you're trying to do. So um, I love it. And, and hopefully some of these ones do come to fruition. We'll see about some others such as uh, Judkins. If, if that actually has any merit to it with Brendan in, in his giving him the eyes, but um, he followed him on Instagram. That's that's true. Listen, we did end last episode saying Instagram never lies. If, so, if you follow a, a fellow football player, on Instagram, it means that you're going where that guy's going. If you follow a woman, I we can't talk about that. <laughs> it on means this that podcast. she's going where you're going, where you want to go. <laughs> where you want to, and go. that is the DPT. T- <laughs> uh, t- DTPT is what I was trying to say. Damn it! But uh, we got obviously and then a big week for that. And then, yeah, well, then hopefully court. not for your boy. Then- um, <laughs> but. Uh, we got a big week ahead. Obviously, we're going to be monitoring the transfer portal. We'll have the latest from Columbus. I, I still think we should probably hold out for some staff changes here. So as all the stuff drops, we got to do we'll, our we'll superlatives keep... too. Oh, we got to do our superlatives, kind of our year end review. So we got that coming up probably next week. And please, we are a new podcast. Please make sure to follow the podcast literally anywhere you get your podcast preferably everywhere. That's Apple Podcasts, that's Spotify, follow them both on the free Odyssey app. And of course, right here um, on the 92.3 The Fan YouTube channel as well, if you're watching us. But uh, other than that, guys, don't forget to drop us a line at Nick Wilson says at Spencito underscore. We will be back next week with the latest on the Buckeyes. Until then, Spencer, go Bucks.